Fellows, AC here. Welcome to another video. Now, a few months ago, I did a niche uh, sort of haul video, and that was loved by a lot of people. That was my first haul video. Here's the second one. Now, I've been on a sort of a shopping spree over the last couple of months. What I've done is I'm going to do a July haul video, but some of the entries in this video are from the month of June as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, before I start, my scent of the day. Scent of the day is a Roja. Roja Chypre Extraordinaire. It was released last year. It, I believe it's only a Selfridges exclusive. So I put one spray under my shirt, actually two sprays under my shirt from a little test while I have and all day I've been smelling it. It's a very hot day as well today, muggy. So it wasn't a very good choice. But I'll tell you one thing though, this thing reminded me of the Agilev. I'll do a full review of both these fragrances, but I tell you, both are worth thousand pounds, you know? <laughs> I don't know whether I'll ever get a bottle of it, but uh, I enjoyed it. Really good, really complex, and it's very strong. You can imagine, it's coming from under my shirt and it's wafting. It's been doing that all day. So, Shipra Extraordinaire. Review coming soon, but let's start with my massive haul video this will be a long video so do be patient with me so let me start with a sample pack and it's no less this house has been making a lot of waves on Instagram and it's basically a house by two composers they were music composers and they've turned into a parfumer so and they are amazing these two guys are Ricardo Tedeschi Tedeschi I don't know how to pronounce his name and Alessandro Brun now, I haven't sampled anything from this house and it's called Mask Milano. So this is this is the sample pack. It's got 10 samples in it and I've ordered myself the sample pack. It's, it's going all over the place. So I assume if I open the packet, it'll just fall off, but I'll still try. So this house is absolutely making all the right kind of noises at the moment. Here it is. So I've got 10 samples. One has gone down. 10 samples to to test out and do reviews for you. One that is really famous with Instagrammers is called, um, what is it called? Um, Hemingway. So Hemingway is pretty famous. Uh, I'm going to review Hemingway. One sample has broken spring, so I'll have to deal with that later on. But uh, I tell you what, I'm really looking forward to sampling this. Uh, there's some other samples here as well. One sample is gone. The springs come off. So I'll have to find out how to deal with this one. But I'm really looking forward to uh, doing the review from Musk Milano. So that's number one, number one acquisition, very hard to get hold of. So my mate in India, Rohit, you've done a stunning job this time, Rohit. Without him, it's impossible for me to do these whole videos. He does some amazing things for me. So it's all thanks to Rohit. So I'm gonna definitely sample a few from Musk Milano and I'm going to do a review because this house is getting a lot of attention. Next fragrance in my whole video is from a house that I love the most, Guerlain, and it's called Lame Dun Heroes, I believe. I pronounce, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. This is basically based on another famous Guerlain and it's known as Coriolan. This is basically a barbershop fragrance. I'm trying to um, collect everything from this, um, you know, whatever line they've got, niche line or preway line, whatever they call, I can't remember. But I've got quite a few of these now. So this was available as a partial, went for it. Most um, probably I'll be able to review it within the next couple of months. I have already worn it once and I, from what I wear, what I gather, this is basically a vetiver and thyme and bergamot fragrance. It reminds me of the fougeres of the 80s. This is not a powerhouse, but it has that smell of the 80s. Very nice, very interesting fougere, barbershop. Uh, but I have to give it a few wears to be able to give you my uh, sort of assessment. <clears throat> the next is a fragrance which I love, and I never had a full bottle of it, but uh, I'm gonna do, do a review of this one very soon. And it's a fabulous fragrance. It's by Maison Francis Coutjean, and this is called Masculine Pluriel. Now this one is a lavender-based fragrance, lavender. 
ah oh, man this is amazing so i have to i have to wear it a few more times but i've sampled it before and i loved it so masculine pluriel again uh, sort of barbershop fragrance but i wouldn't say it's proper barbershop i still have to wear it and understand it but mostly it's a lavender vetiver based fragrance which is just beautifully done very modern uh, i would say modern masculine beautiful fragrance I'll have to wear it a few more times to do a review, but that's the second one in the whole video. A third one is from a house which I respect a lot, and I've done a few reviews from this house. It is by Nishani, and it's called Africa Olifant. Now, Africa Olifant is all about, you listen, you read some comments, and they say it smells like an elephant or a zoo. It's not, it's the smell of Africa. So what would you get in Africa? Untamed natural beauty. So they've tried to use untamed oud. And with that, there are four animalic notes, ambergris and musk, and castorium and civet. But I've sampled it before. It's an amazingly complex cold weather fragrance, which is quite wearable. There is absolutely no problem with wearability. It's not animalic. It's not crazy, crazy fragrance. It's a really lovely fragrance. So Africa Olifant is my next on my uh, haul list. It's a fabulous fragrance. I really like complex fragrances, and this one is very complex. And Nishani, you know, Nishani is a house I really have a lot of time for. Next is an indie fragrance. Now this guy is amazing. He doesn't have a shop front, and he makes fragrances directly uh, after his customers through Instagram tell him what to make. He's an Indian perfumer. His name is Mridul Chopra. I'll put his link in my description. And this one is called Pulp Blue Tune. This is fabulous. He's done a, such a stunning job here. It's a fruity, citrusy, woody fragrance. It reminds me of Roger's Elysium Cologne, but he's put some twist into it. It is just fabulous. This fragrance, I love this fragrance, um, but problem is he doesn't have a shop front. I think he's working on that. He's working on the commercial aspects, but this guy is a genius. I've tried a, quite a few fragrances from this house. It's called Mridul's. They are just amazing. But mostly he works on creating copies, which I think he's more than that. He's more than uh, a, a guy who clones fragrances. Next on my list is from a house which only second to Gerla is my most favorite niche house. It is Amouage, and this is Journeyman. I got this in June, and I tell you what, <sighs> this is exactly why I love Amouages. It's a olfactive serendipity. It's a beautiful fragrance. It tries to do the sort of Southern China thingy on the um, Silk Route. It, they have already done Epic. This one is basically a sequel to that. So they've got Sichuan pepper, tobacco, incense, sandalwood, many florals. It's a highly complex, highly versatile, very, very easy to wear, luxurious, opulent fragrance. I love this fragrance. I'm testing it out in cold weather. I'm gonna do a full review, but every time I've worn this, I've loved it. Journeyman is one of the most wearable compliment magnets from Amouage. It's beautiful. And this one is made in Oman, but it's got this magnetic cap but it's, it's made in Oman, it's a tester bottle, which I got off eBay, and am I delighted that I got one. So my Amouage collection is growing slowly. I've got about nine now from Amouages. Now, the next one on my list, again on the subject of tobacco, I'm sticking to tobacco, and this is from a niche house, which is getting a lot of attention. They create amazingly high performance fragrances, but their fragrances are priced quite reasonably i would say as far as uh, in the right sense of the word when it comes to niche and it's by nikolai this fragrance is called queer cuba intense queer means leather there's no leather here and i think it's just basically playing on the words but i love this fragrance it's a tobacco based fragrance and there's much much more to it i haven't given this a proper wearing yet because the weather is too hot but it's got tobacco licorice anise many other notes mint as well i believe it's a very very complex and like every nikolai creation it's high quality 
and I'm just hoping to give it a proper wear to do a full review. I'll do that in cold weather, but this is again another tobacco centric fragrance. Journey has a very nice note of tobacco. Okay, let's talk about some essential oils. They're not oils, they're others, but I want to talk about them because they're quite special. Rohit has some great connections in India. So there's this house called um, ML, uh, let me f first read the house. This is, I think, ML, uh, don't have my glasses here, Ram Narayan or something. They're based in a place in India called Kanauj. Now, Kanauj has been, it can be called the home of perfumery when it comes to Indian perfume making. It's been in existence for more than 3000 years. All the Maharajas and the Nawabs used to actually source their fragrances and others uh, from Kanauj. These, these guys have carried on with the tradition. So I've ordered a few and a couple I'd like to show you. One is called Kashmir. I'll put the name in the description. I haven't got my glasses, so it will be very difficult. Uh, Kashmir, I think it's 192121. This is basically the postcode of an area in Kashmir where the finest saffron is grown. And this one is just amazing. I've tried it once. It is a phenomenal scent. It's not only about saffron. It's just the most amazingly natural smelling, opulent, all consuming experience. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Roy tells me that big fragrance houses like Guerlain source their essential oils directly from these guys. I mean, Ram Narayan. I'll put the name in there. This one is, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Ru Khas. Khas in Urdu means vetiver. And Ru means soul. This is a word you'll hear a lot when it comes to Atas. The reason this is green is not because of the color of the grass, but this whole thing is distilled into a copper vessel and copper gives it that green, rich green color. Uh, to be honest with you, this is more ambery green in color. One of the most finest scents on planet Earth. Ruhas. I tried it yesterday evening and I'm a vetiver lover. And I was given the journey of my life. Every single vetiver I've smelled was there. So vetiver has this green, creamy smell. Sometimes it's earthy, sometimes it's woody, sometimes it has this fine nuance of tobacco. This thing gave me everything. I'll do a full review soon, but Ruhas blew my hats off. And thanks to Rohit, I'm able to experience it because they don't have a retail shop front. They're wholesalers. So he got this for me. Again, very, very thankful. So I'll, I'll do a full review. I've got a couple more. One is called Ruh Ghulab. Ghulab in Urdu means rose. And the variety of rose that is grown in India is known as Taif rose. There are other varieties as well, like Damask and um, Bulgarian rose, which is more popular. Rose de May is very popular in Eastern perfumery. But here I've got Taif rose. I'm gonna try it, I've not tried it yet. So I want to experience that because I, I've fallen in love with rose recently. And the other one is called Ruh Mitti. Mitti means soil. Now, India being a very hot country, when the summer heat really beats down on these plants, trees and fruits and flowers, everything gets evaporated in the atmosphere. And then when the monsoons arrive, it really pours. And when the first monsoon hits this charred earth, a beautiful essence comes out of the earth. And that is known as, I think it's called Petrichor. And what they've tried to do is capture the smell of that Petrichor. It's such a beautiful scent that it, it has inspired many poets and they write about the smell. And trust me, if you stand in the first rain shower in any part of Northern India, because it gets very hot in Northern India, you will be mesmerized with the smell and everything just springs to life. The birds start singing. It's just an amazing time to be. This is the time. This is the time when monsoon hits India. And that's the smell. I wanted that smell because I miss that smell. It's the smell of my childhood. Uh, when, when the first rain comes, parents normally allow their kids to go out and, you know, get wet. And I've, I've spent many uh, monsoons getting wet and then you fall ill because, you know, suddenly the body can't cope with all that rain. So it's that smell that I was missing. And I asked Rahit to get it for me. So the Ruv Mitti, um, I'm going to do a review of that as well. So those are the essential oils. 
Now he's also sent me a fragrance which is getting a lot of eyeballs. It's an all natural creation and it's called Brindavan. Now this, this is a mouthful, so I'll write it down in the description. This is getting a lot of talk. And why? Because it's quite a complex fragrance and I've not tried it. I can tell you one thing, it's very, very rich, but the note breakdown doesn't suggest it will be this rich. And now Brindavan is the place where Lord Krishna spent a lot of his time, his youth. And he was a bit of a woman's man. So he was in deep love with one girl. And old Indian mythology talks about his uh, love affair. And Brindavan is the place where his love matured. So they've tried to create this amazingly romantic, beautiful mythical scent which is Vrindavan. So I'll, I'll do a review of this one but I'm looking forward to it. It must be something and it is something I can I can make out. So next fragrance on my list as I said is going to be a long video this one because I've got about seven left, six left is a fragrance which is critically acclaimed and it's an incense. It's Comme des Gaxons Man 2. I acquired this in June and I'm including it in this whole video. I've been looking for this fragrance for absolute ages. This is a masterful creation if you like incense. This is one of those fragrances which leaves me speechless. It's a masterful creation. I will do a full review, but I want to first wear it enough and the best weather to wear it would be autumn. So I'm waiting for autumn. But this fragrance, if you can get hold of it, do get it because man too, is not only critically acclaimed, it's also a very fine fragrance. It, it'll leave you speechless. Now, in this list, there is only one designer, if you can call it a designer. And that's a fragrance which I was finding very difficult to get hold of here. So Rohit got it for me from India, and it is Rasasi's Havas. Havas means passion. This fragrance is basically a fruity, um, aquatic, but beautifully made, and it's massively popular with people who look for compliments. So I wanted to experience this myself. I've got a little decant which Roy sent me earlier, but I wanted a full bottle. And soon I will do a review of this because this is quite a fragrance for hot summer heat. And we are getting a bit of heat at the moment. And it's this beautiful fruity aquatic ambergris based fragrance, which I will review soon. So this is the only design in this list. Have us. So another one which is an amouage, is one of the most critically acclaimed amouages. It's beautifully made fragrance. It's the most romantic amouage, in my opinion. Made in Oman, amouage, Lyric Man. Now, Lyric Man is based on rose, and there are so many other notes here. I'm yet to spray this, because this is not the right weather to spray this fragrance. But once I do, I'm sure I'll be greeted to oil fat of heaven. So, this is again one of those fragrances which I have to review, but I want to experience it enough to do a review. I've been waiting for this fragrance for a long, long time. And finally, I got a Made in Oman. So here it is, Lyric Man, one of the finest amouages, very romantic and obviously extremely opulent. So next on the list is another fragrance which I have been waiting for a long, long time because the version that I want is discontinued. I made a mistake. By mistake, I, I own this fragrance because I was looking for the discontinued version. But this one is brilliant nonetheless. This one is called Ombre Nuit by Christian Dior. And I'll tell you what, I was wrong about this. It has been discontinued. The discontinued version is an EDT. This is an EDP. But this is amazing as well. I love it now. I'm not saying it because I've gone ahead and got myself a partial and I've paid a lot of money for this. This is expensive. Ombre Nui is a shining example of how to use florals and ambergris. And this is one of those fragrances that leaves you speechless. It's a masterpiece. And I've got the EDP. I've tried the EDT. The EDT is even one or two notches above this one. But I'm very happy with this acquisition. I'll still hunt the EDT down. It's discontinued. Very hard to get hold of. But Ombre Nui is my other acquisition. Again, a cold weather fragrance. So I'll test it out and then I'll do a review. So the last in the list is again a discontinued fragrance and it's a masterpiece. Very hard to get hold of and it is by Arij Ledore and the name of the fragrance is Russian Oud and I'm actually very happy to just get an empty bottle. No, I'm joking. I actually got 
a full bottle, uh, 30 ml, a partial, very hard to get hold of. This is discontinued. And there was a problem with the bottle. And apparently this is quite a common problem. So this bottle here is not Sauvage. It's basically um, a Russian oud filled into a Sauvage bottle. And what happened, I'll show you what the problem is. The problem is that these are very badly manufactured. So it becomes loose. And as, a, as it becomes loose, and it's very expensive, these fragrances are in the range of, I think 50 ml goes for about 250, if you can find them. So if you look at the price of the bottle they charge, and the fragrances are just amazing, don't get me wrong. The creations are amazing. But the effort they put into these bottles is just really pathetic. I mean, even the label has been, there's some black marks there. So these black marks, this is basically suede. It's been glued into the bottle, but there's some black marks. So I'm assuming that they are molds. I hope I'm wrong, but slightly moldy. So their presentation is not very good. But the fragrance, I'm telling you, I have not smelled a finer wood fragrance in my life. More complex, more full, more opulent fragrance. And I think I can understand. They're probably not putting any effort into bottles and all that stuff because it'll add to the cost. So I can understand, but when you pay 250 bucks for a 50 ml bottle, sorry, fragrance, you don't expect the bottle to fall apart. And this is this is high quality stuff. It's cork or wood or whatever it is, but the bottle falls apart. And this is not a one-off problem. It's a common problem. So yeah, slightly disappointed by that. But yeah, Sauvage bottle will do for the moment. This is my finest acquisition in this whole video. Arij Ledore, Russian Oud. Discontinued, very hard to get. But if you get hold of it, you'll know what I mean. It's an amazing fragrance. Amazing. So, hope you enjoyed this whole video. I'll be doing full reviews, um, you know, one by one. But you, I think, will get an idea of where my collection is go going and what fragrances I intend to review soon. Hope you enjoyed this whole video, fellas. Take care. Bye-bye.